All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the proper use of the microscope. So you'll notice the microscopes in most laboratories are either at a dedicated workstation or in a cabinet. And when we get the microscopes, you will notice that they are under a dust cover. You always want to grab it underneath the dust cover, not over the dust cover, because if you grab it over the dust cover, the dust cover is slip, slippery, slippery, and it can slip out of your hands. So we grab the microscope by this part here, which is called the arm, and we support it under the base. And we carry it like this to our station where we're going to work. You'll notice that the cord is wrapped up around the microscope. We want to unwind the cord. We never want to leave the cord wrapped up around the microscope because there are moving parts here that can crush the cord if you're not careful. So we always unwrap the cord from the microscope. And then we will plug our microscope in, being careful not to have the cord dangling so that you could trip over it. Now most microscopes have an on-off switch and a light intensity. So we have a substage light here, which you can see, which allows for the light to be brighter or less bright. In this particular microscope, the control for our substage light is also your on-off switch. In other microscopes, you'll have a separate switch. Now you will see that we have several parts of the microscope here. And in addition to the arm, which is the part that we carry it by, and the base, which is the part that it sits on, we have several lenses. First set of lenses we're gonna look at are called ocular lenses. These are the ones that you will look through with your eyes. And ocular means eye, so the, these are the ocular lenses. And the ocular lenses sit on body tubes. This whole assembly sits on a head, the head sits on the arm. Then we will notice here we have what is called a rotating nose piece. And the rotating nose piece has several objective lenses on them. These are called objective lenses because they will be looking at, or I should say, you will be observing the slide through the objective lenses and they will be closest to your slide. You will see that we have four objective lenses and they all can be changed via this rotating nose piece. You will notice that the smallest of these objective lenses is the red one, has a red band around it, and this is called the scanning objective lens. The next highest is called the low power lens, and the next highest is called the high powered lens, and then the highest power that we have, will not be using in this class, and actually requires a drop of oil between it and the specimen to prevent distortion because light moving through the slide will be distorted without the aid of an oil drop between the lens and the slide. So the slide sits on this part here which is called the stage and we have this set of calipers right here sometimes called the mechanical stage and when we put our specimen on First of all, the first thing we will do is make sure that we have our scanning objective. This is very important. We always store the microscope also with the scanning objective here. And there are several reasons for this. But for one, this gives us our most zoomed out view. This will give us the entire picture of our slide. So we put our slide in place, and you notice these little arms grab the slide. So these are little caliper arms that grab the slide and hold it in place. And you can notice that the stage can move backwards and forwards. This is the whole mechanical stage assembly. You can move it backwards and forwards by the use of mechanical stage controls or side to side. And this is what allows you to put the slide where you can actually see it. So if you look at the slide, you can see there's a specimen on it. And you want to put the specimen over the light. And once you can see that, then you know you have a pretty good idea that you'll be looking at. Now the substage light must pass through a condenser. And the condenser is a focusing lens that will focus the light through the slide. The condenser will have what is called an iris diaphragm. 
which can change the amount of light that passes through the condenser lens. And we manipulate the iris diaphragm via this lever. Sometimes it's just a knurled ring. Sometimes it's an actual lever called the iris diaphragm lever. And you can see here how the amount of light that is coming through the slide changes as we stop this thing down or open it up. Now another thing that we will see is we have our focus knobs. We have what's called a coarse focus knob and a fine focus knob. Some people call this the coarse and fine adjustments. Either way, they basically will move the stage up and down. And that is what's going to help you focus the slide. So when we start, we always start with our scanning objective. Now the scanning objective will, ma will magnify what's on the slide four times. Our ocular lenses, in this case, will magnify the subject ten times. So to get the total magnification, we multiply the objective lens magnification times the ocular lens magnification. The ocular lenses here are 10x. Our scanning objective is 4x, so you multiply 4 times 10, you get 40x, so you get a 40 times magnification. So when we look at our slide, we can use our course adjustment or our course focus to bring the slide into focus. We can make some adjustments, and if you look on this side, you will see our stage control knobs our mechanical stage controls, which move the stage forward and back, forward and back, and the bottom one moves it side to side. And this allows you to adjust where the image is under your objective lens. So once we have done that, and we have our image, or I should say our subject where we want it, we use our course focus until we can see the image. And then what we will do is we will use our fine focus until we get the image into a clear focus. And once we have done that, then and only then can we move up to a higher power. So we'll move from the scanning objective to the low power objective, and the low power has a 10 times magnification. So we know that this will magnify what is on the slide 10 times. Your ocular lenses will magnify it 10 times. So to get the total magnification, you multiply the two to get 100 times magnification. So this will show us what is on the slide, a hundred times bigger than what it is under the naked eye. And so once I have adjusted it at the scanning lens, I can see it very clearly here with very little adjustment. And at this point, we use only the fine focus or fine adjustment knob. We never touch the core. Again. Now, once we've done that, we can move up to our high power objective. And once again, a quick twist with the fine focus brings the subject into focus, and we can see it clearly. Now our high power lens, in this case, has a 40 times magnification. So what that means is we have a 40 times magnification here and 10 times magnification in the ocular lens, so we'll get a 400 times overall magnification. So the formula for your magnification is going to be your objective lens power times your ocular lens power, and that will give you your overall magnification. Now, when we are done with a slide, we always return it to the scanning objective. Never do we move the stage at this point. For one, when we have the long lens in place, if you move it the wrong way, it'd be very easy to crack the slide, especially if you used your course focus. And one of the mistakes that I see a lot of students make is when they want to change the slide, they'll immediately start to roll the stage away and pull the slide out and leave the high power lens in place. You'll never find your subject if you try that. And not only that, but you'll be much more likely to break the, the slide. So therefore, we always go back to our scanning objective. When we take the slide out and we put our next slide in, and we center it over our light, and we look in there, we see that it's already in focus. It requires very, very little adjustment. Once we get our first slide in place, it will require little to no adjustment on the fine focus knobs in order to bring that into focus. Now, another thing you'll see about these microscopes is a lot of you will have different vision. 
So if you're wearing glasses or if you're wearing contacts, your vision may dif be different from your partner's. You actually have a diopter setting that can help you focus, for example, and it's right here on the ocular lenses, that can help you determine what your correction, so to speak, will be. So you can actually sort of add your correction into the lens by adjusting the diopter setting here. We also have, since most of us, these are what we call binocular microscopes, and they're binocular because they have two lenses. So you can actually see things three-dimensionally in here because you're viewing with both eyes. So when you look, let's just say that your partner has wider set eyes. You can adjust the lenses to fit your particular eyes so that you can view through both eyes. And if you look through, so if you look at a subject and you see you can only see in one eye, it means you probably have the width of the lenses maladjusted and you just need to adjust them so that you can see with both eyes. Now, if you put the microscope up, we always return it to the scanning objective. This is first and foremost. We always want to store it with a scanning objective. We will turn it off. We will remove the slide. And we always handle the slides by the edges. Well, we can handle it by the label as well, but we do not want to put our sticky fingerprints on it. So this is very important because that can obscure the specimen. So when we put it, we put it back in our slide box. And then we're ready to put it away. We always leave the scanning objective in place when we store the microscope. And if your previous lab has come in here and done everything correctly and has left the microscope in the last state that they used it, then technically when you put your slide on, it should be almost in focus with very little adjustment needing to be made. The other thing you will want to do when you put your microscope back up is you will want to wrap the cord around the, grip, the body of the microscope, or I should say the arm of the microscope here, so that you don't trip over it. You will re replace the dust cover. And you will grab the arm, again, under the dust cover, under the base, and now you have a very stable way to carry the microscope. And you're not likely to drop it. And that covers our use of the microscope.